What is going on Raiders? Soda Dragon here. Welcome and I hope you guys are doing well. So the game is not letting me in yet, but that's fine. I can do this intro without it. So I've been testing guys in a lot of PvE scenarios and I got some thoughts for you guys. So question, do you guys want the good news first or the bad news? I don't know about you guys, but personally, I like the bad news first. So I am gonna give you the bad news first, followed by the good news. So what is the bad news about guys? Well, as far as dungeons, he is not that good. I tested him in Ice Golem, Dragon, and Fire Knight, and the results were underwhelming. Now, it's not exactly Gaius' fault because bombs are not percentage-based damage, unlike something like Poisons or HP Burn, which are. So while Gaius' bomb damage is pretty impressive in instances of non-bosses like in the arena or against enemy waves, once we get to bosses and their huge HP pools, all of a sudden, Gaius's bombs just don't do enough damage. So basically, in all the dungeons, you would be better off with a Poisoner than with Gaius. And yes, we know Gaius can explode those bombs instantly. It doesn't matter. They still don't do enough damage. One bomb does not do as much damage as one tick of a Poison. That's how little damage you're doing. So that is going to be the downside of Gaius. He's not particularly good against bosses. Now, if a boss has a particular weakness to bombs like Bombo, of course, Gaius, I expect him to be really good. But in the case of normal bosses, his damage is just not going to be enough from those bombs. Basically, for all bosses except Bombo, you would be better off with a Poisoner than with Gaius. Now, the idea that Gaius might not be that great against bosses to some of you guys is not surprising. And this is probably because you played the game a while and you know it's not Gaius's fault. It's because bombs are not good against bosses most of the time. So in dungeons, yes, Gaius can help you through those waves and he does pretty good. But once you get to the boss, whoever that is himself, yes, your run times are going to be a little bit slower because Gaius is just not contributing enough damage. So Gaius's strengths are definitely more towards PvP. But that being said, there are some pretty cool things he can do for PvE, which I'm going to talk about. All right, finally we're logged in. That maintenance lasted a little bit too long. So as I was saying, there are some downsides to guys in PvE, namely against most bosses, but there are some good sides to guys in PvE as well. One nice thing is guys can be your campaign farmer, so let's watch him on Brutal 12-3. Should wreck these waves. Look at that, 13 seconds, not bad. Now I know what you guys are saying, so what? My starter Kale can do that. Okay, can you Kale do 12-3 Nightmare? Well, this guy can, let's watch. Now it's not like a speed run, but still, it's pretty good. It's a little bit slow because other champs are getting turns, those uh, food champs, but still, they'll die off. So can your Kale do that? So guys, once again, remember my Gaius is built for pure attack. He's built for the arena, he's not built for PvE, so he doesn't have any tankiness at all. He can't really take a hit. But still, you can see what potential this guy has. So yeah, if you wanna use him as your consistent nightmare farmer, I mean, you can, you just need to build him a little bit tankier than I have. But still, even not tanky at all, he wrecked Nightmare 12-3. All right, we got another update coming right after that really long one we just had, but that's fine. I showed you guys what I wanted to show you. All right, guys, on to Geiss' gear stats and masteries. Once again, if you really want to use him for PvE, build him tankier. This is just my arena build that I happen to try out in different areas of campaign. Now, once again, against bosses, even if you build him tanky, he's not going to contribute that much because bombs just don't do that much damage. But if you're talking about like enemy waves, campaign farming, things like that, yeah, make sure to build him a little bit more tanky than this is. This is more of an arena build. But how have I geared him? I have him in two perception sets and a speed set. On to his total stats. 
I have his HP at 30,000. I have the attack at 4,900. I have the defense at 1,900. Speed 207. Crit rate 74%. Crit damage 273%, resist 196, and accuracy 416. Onto his masteries. So down the offense tree here, we do have Helm Smash. This will have a 50% chance of ignoring 25% of the enemy's defense. So you get a big damage boost with Helm Smasher for enemy waves, arena, things like that. If we're talking about bosses, then you're going to go War Master. And here you can go Spirit Haste if you're planning to use him, for example, as your campaign farm. Because when those food champs die off, he's going to get a speed boost. All right, guys, that's it for my mini Gaia showcase. Now, you can try him against dungeons. And like I said, it's not like he doesn't contribute anything. He's really good against the waves. But once you get to the boss, that's the thing. He's not that good. You'd be far better off with a Poisoner. But he can do Nightmare 12-3. There is not many champs that can do it. Like, honestly, that's really, really good. So that's another good thing about guys. Yeah, if you're in the need of a nightmare campaign farmer, then yeah, he could be your guy. Obviously, when Balma and Dark Fae come out, I will absolutely test him there, and I expect him to do really good. Thanks for watching, guys. And if you haven't yet, like, subscribe, and share. Turn on all notifications. Stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.